Start off with say, uh, you know, my name is Grant Robinson, and uh, I'm in Edmonton now, but I was born and raised in Toronto, and uh, I was adopted. Uh, my real mom uh, was a hooker down on Young Street. She used to uh, do drugs, and which made me uh, an addictive drug user when I was born, and uh, they had to feed me off of uh, drugs slowly. Uh, I was supposed to be mentally retarded, but I came out of it pretty good. Okay, I started doing crime in Toronto when uh, I was about 15 years old. I started off with uh, stealing my uh, neighbor's mountain bike and I uh, took it all apart and a police officer showed up in the driveway and said, did you steal uh, your neighbor's bike? And I had it all in pieces. <laughs> and uh, she goes, it looks like Eddie described it and it looks like it's all in parts and here it is here. Here's your parents' home. So uh, I thought, well, I don't really don't want my parents involved, so... She goes, if you don't want your parents involved, you better put the bike back together. So I put the bike back together, give it to them, and, uh, you know, back to uh, where uh, I started getting into trouble. I wasn't really a part of their family, my adopted uh, family. So, I, you know, the blood's, you know, a bit different chemistry. And so I, I started getting into a lot more trouble. I decided to uh, start smoking pot and doing other drugs and next thing you know I, I thought well I shouldn't really put these nice people through this so I decided to leave home so I left home and came to Edmonton started doing a lot of crime and started doing a lot of drugs and I uh, in order to do my crime uh, to do my drugs I had to do the crime so uh, I ended up in jail a lot, which that's where I ran into my lawyer, and uh, you know he's a really good lawyer. He's like a father figure, like I said to me, and uh, I plan on keeping him. My criminal activities, uh, being in Toronto, like it's it's a lot harder because it's such a big city, and there are police everywhere. There, there's cops everywhere. Like they're they're within a half a block. Yeah. And in here, like uh, in Edmonton, it's like a suburb, and uh, you know. Uh, for example, like when I did my break and enters on businesses, I would go into a business during the day and I would ask, you know, can you have, do you have change for a 50? And they'd get the petty change box and they'd be working, I'd scope the place out while I was in there getting change. So I'd know where the petty change box is. I'd know if they had a laptop because it's right around mm -hmm. the area. Um, therefore, I'd come back that night when they're closed and with uh, doing research, being from Toronto and the alarm company's security, when the alarm goes off, the alarm company phones. They let the ring, they let the phone ring seven times. So when you put a brick through a window, it, it takes a matter of uh, not even ten seconds for the, bar, the brick to go through the window. It takes another seven seconds for you to hop in the window and take the petty change box and beeline it out of there yeah. <coughs> therefore you've got a laptop and you've got like two hundred dollars in change and and bills which every business has so you can sell the laptop for two hundred dollars and you can also keep the money yeah, that you sh that's quite a bit of money for uh let's go for 30 to 66 to a minute yeah you know so when I came out here it was like oh my god this is even better I, you could do two stores in one you know in five minutes yeah. you know and you could be walking out with 500 bucks i was uh i, I was uh 
on a unit which I didn't get along with many of the uh, people on the unit because they're uh, gang members and stuff like that and uh, I used to sit there and uh, didn't get along with them so what I did is I, I ship bomb them right ship bombs uh, uh, you get your trail mix bag and you poop and piss in the toilet and you mix it all up <laughs> and you put it in a ziplock bag and you slide it under someone's door and you step on it and it goes barreling in and it soaks them or it soaks the floor anyways and they're on 23 hour lockup so therefore they get they, they they can't clean it up until it's their turn exercise out which they have to smell shit and piss all the time so some guys in there think they're tough and you know they're ex-gang members and gang members and guys that you know want to rape women and you know hound down kids and you know i just don't get along with any of them people so you know, I would just tell them, look at you know, you're you're a freaking Skinner. You're, yeah. you're, I don't like you, so don't crack to me. And then they would mouth off to me, and then that would deserve a shit bomb. Uh, and with my history with the gangs and uh, like certain gangs I'd deal with, uh, I would sell them my stolen goods. Yeah. Therefore, uh, these other gangs wanted them, and you know they, I wouldn't sell them to them because they would give me you know like low lower money, right? Yeah. So then they threatened me. To beat me up in jail or out of jail, so uh, well, I decided uh, I got to get into 23-hour lockup, high profile. So I uh, thought, all right, I'll ship bomb a guard. So I ship bombed a reman guard, and that got me into high profile. See, if you're good in jail, you stay minimum security, mm -hmm. and then they have uh, maximum security, and then they have high profile, yeah. which I turned into high profile. I learned this uh, art, this, um, I have an art that I do and it's, uh, it's uh, making stuff out of art paper and chip bags. I learned it in jail. This is the Bill Soul Center West. This is where I do a lot of my art and I'm about to go do some right now. It's nice and quiet. I do most of my artwork here. I. Um, get most of my thoughts when I'm alone. Uh, they let me use this room to do my artwork. Uh, they understand that I was in 23 hour lockup and they understand that I need to be alone. I can't be around a lot of people. Um, I enjoy working here, it's really nice. I like uh, coming to the Bissell and using their boardroom because uh, nobody else is around and that's where I get my uh, deepest thoughts when I'm working on my art because I have to be alone when I was locked up in 23 hour seven or 27 or 24 hours of the day I was that's where I get most of my thoughts I was alone right so I uh, thought well I had a pill bottle and I had some clear art paper the art paper is uh, it's like construction paper it's like a folder it's it's fairly thick it's thicker than paper what I had done is I had put the pill bottle over the uh, art paper similar to something like this and uh, you're not allowed scissors or uh, razor blades in jail. So what I do is I'd go around it like this until it broke through the paper. And once it broke through the paper, I'd have a circle. Well, then I'd get the Edmonton Sun and I'd look for a black tuxedo or something black or black car advertising, and I'd go around it. And then what I it would break through. So then I'd grab my institutional toothpaste, which this is white glue, but institutional toothpaste works. I would glue it onto it. And then I had a smaller pill bottle, and what I'd do is I would go around it until it broke through, and then I would color it in as a mag, as you can see here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> then, <laughs> then uh, once the tire was made, I had a coffee box, and I had made a chassis. So now I gotta figure out a way to get these tires put on this chassis. So I built angle brackets, and then uh, next thing you know, I had the chassis, just the sides and the tires. So then I thought, well, I need fenders. So I thought run them, running them along the chassis, these are all curved. My first, very first one was square. So I bent them straight and, you know, I, I glued them on with my institutional toothpaste. So therefore, what I did was I started getting creative and I thought, I'm going to start doing them round because you can bend them. And I remember in school, if you get a small piece of paper and you put it on your pen and you flick it, it'll curl. So that's what I did. And then I thought, wow, isn't that perfect? It goes around the whole tire perfectly. 
So, and then I glued it on and it was like, wow. So now I just have to build the engine and the frame and maybe I can build a rad too. So I started off with the rad and I made it, okay, well, it has to be the same size as the tire or else it's going to look funny. So I made it the same size as the tire. Then I thought, okay, I need an engine. Okay, the engine would sit back from the rad about maybe uh, half an inch or so. So it's dynamics and, and figuring out the sizes and what you actually want to put into it. It's, it's, it's called using your creative mind. <laughs> so I used my creative mind and uh, I ended up with a, a car like this. And after that, I thought, wow, is that ever cool? And I had a lot of the reman guards tell me, uh, we have never seen anything like this before in our entire life. So they told the director, the director came up, he uh, offered me a $20 canteen voucher, or he said it could be contraband and take it away. <laughs> so I took the canteen. Um, then I thought, well, this gave me a lot more inspiration uh, or inspirement. So what I did was, I decided to build a trailer and I knew what I was going to put on the trailer and that's a chopper. So in order to be, uh, to get straws, I thought I need a bag lunch. I'm going to have to be bad. So I, 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 I did some bad things in jail and they go, well, you're not getting a hot meal. You're getting a bag lunch. And I said, okay, fine. <laughs> Which I was looking forward to the juice box straws. So I used the juice box straws for the forks, the handlebars, and the mufflers. I had to put, the, I had to use a straw, I made a straw, I cut a straw about that big, and then I, I glued it in there. And then I put a pen through the middle of the shaft, and uh, she turns just beautiful. Then, you get these granola bars in jail on canteen. Well, I had $20 canteen from the uh, uh, warden, right? So what I did was, I ordered some of these Nutigrain bars granola bars or whatever and then I thought well I got this uh, granola bar package and uh, Nature Valley is one of the best outfits I've ever come across not only I can eat it but I can use it for artwork <laughs> so um, I started to chrome out the engine so once I got the engine chromed out I thought well this is just humdingy uh, I've never had such a, a beautiful piece of art in all my life and I started wrapping them around the engine say the, the forks the mufflers and the engine and then I got some black paper and I made lines and I glued them on and then my mind just got more creative as I was going along and I thought am I gonna have enough time to finish these in jail so I eventually did and I built more and the guards uh, said you can't have all this stuff in your 23 hour lockup cell it's, it's segregation placement you know you're 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 living here like a, it's a hotel <laughs> So uh, like it's your home. And uh, so I thought, all right, well, I got to figure out what I'm going to do with these. So I thought, well, I'm going to give them to the Sick Kids Hospital. I'll ask the uh, chaplain if I can send them out. And sure enough, the chaplain said, I'd be de delighted, Grant, to send them to the, uh, but you have to sign a waiver. So I signed a waiver and off they went. My, I have always wanted to, I've always wanted to build uh, art cars out of art paper. And uh, I thought, well, this is, this is my perfect time to do it you know, uh, in jail, and I, I, I ended up doing it out of jail. I still do them. I'm building the director one right now of the uh, Bissell Center, and he's, uh, he's going to really like it because it's going to be, it's going to take a couple months to do. So once I got released, me and my lawyer, Naeem Rauf, made a deal where we were going to uh, not get into trouble anymore. I, you know, I, I, I promised him I'd behave. So I decided to come to the Bissell, and here I am. And uh, I've got lots of support. I've, uh, I, I go upstairs and see uh, Christian, and uh, you know, almost every day, and see how she's doing. And you know, she's a big, she's a big inspiration in uh, my life. And uh, so is uh, the receptionist upstairs, uh, Matt. You know, I, I really, I really rely on these people a lot. Believe it or not, they they help me out so much. It's not funny. Valerie, thanks to Val, I tell you, she's, she's the owner of this uh, beautiful piece of art of mine. I, I want to get a website going because they are cool little models and it doesn't cost anything. 
for something that doesn't cost any money, it makes a lot of people happy. And that's, uh, that's what the Bissell does for me. So that's what I want to give back to the community and other people. Um, I rely on the Bissell a lot. Uh, I have Matthew that uh, is, you know, adult support and he's really uh, helped me with a lot of things. We went to the YMCA downtown and he helped me get a rec pass so I can uh, get out of the community, the uh, bad area that I live in and do things with my life, get some exercise. Uh, being locked up 23 hours of the day for many years uh, really puts a stress on somebody. Uh, it gets, it brings down their motivation not to even leave their home. Me and Matt have known each other from the Bissell for about two years and... At least, yeah. Yeah, I'm really comfortable with working on him. I don't get along with too many people from being incarcerated for many of years, so I, I trust Matt with all my heart and uh, he leads me into the right direction, seeing how, I'm back, seeing how I'm back into society. Yeah, my name is Matthew Kuvler. I'm an adult support worker at the Bissell Centre. I've been here for three years and what the adult support program does is we're basically a, a second step uh, when people come into the Bissell Center they often come to the drop-in first and then when they need services uh, they come to adult support and we direct them in the right direction whether it's uh, through one of our many uh, internal programs or to external programs we can help people with a wide variety of issues and find the supports that they need. Thanks to the Bissell Center and Matthew I'm coming a long way. The Remand Center is just over here uh, how convenient uh, the top cell in the corner of the building is the one I was on. That's called the 6 floor 23 hour lockup. It's high profile. And the end cell is like an iceberg because of the wind coming through. It's basically, you can see your breath. It's, uh, it's called the asshole tank. It's most of the time where I spent my time and I did my artwork. Okay, this is the uh, first model that I ever made in jail. It's got a lot of square to it. Uh, the tires aren't tubbed in. Uh, there's no chrome on it from the chip bag. <clears throat> when I got out of jail, I, I, I had a choice between uh, go to crime or go back to uh, reality and uh, society. And uh, I faced reality and I went back into society. I hit the Hope Mission. I stayed there for uh, uh, not even a month and I got back on my feet. I rented a, rooming, a room out of a rooming house right next door until I met Jesse and his uh, mom, which I, you know, they kind of like adopted me. They're really supportive people to me. I've got a family here in uh, Edmonton, which uh, adopted me like as, uh, you know, biologically, just as friends, you know, and uh, they let me move into their uh, apartment upstairs from their shop, which is Metro Auto. Sort of disturbing grandma. This is Jessie's mom. Uh, she's uh, like my grandmother. She helps me out with stuff. She's my landlord as well. Gives me money when I need to borrow some. Takes good care of me. Makes me Chinese food. God bless her heart. <laughs> He's like, they're, they're like my family. You know, I, I call her grandma, the owner and everything. And me and Jesse, you know, goof around, play around. And I watch his dog, which is Sunshine. and. She's over there having a snooze. I'll, I'll wake her up in a bit and show you. Um, me and Sunshine get along very well. Uh, we roam around and I take her to the Bissell Center and show her off to people. This is Metro Auto. Where my buddy uh, Jesse's uh, works with his mom. And we'll go on in and I'll introduce you to Jesse. This is Jesse, my bro. Hey, how's it going? landlord. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I need to borrow money, he's always there for me. Yeah. And this is his dog, which you might want to get a shot with a, him and his doggy, because it's going to be on film. Okay, you want to hold it? I tried doing her nails. That <laughs> didn't what? work. She moves. Sunshine? Yeah. Sunshine? She's, uh, that's uh, Jesse's best friend, besides mm -hmm. his wife. She's and tail uh, wig. Yeah. Tail wig. Yeah, no way. Well, Grant's a good guy. He helps me out all the time. So, yeah. Whenever he needs help, I help him too. So, it works both ways. Yeah. yeah. He's an awesome friend. You know, like, uh, if he needs something, I'll, I'll help him out the best I can. Uh, I got invited to his wedding. He just recently got married. He's, uh, he's got a lovely wife. 
And uh, you know, I, I wish the best for him. He's he's got a very successful business going. He does a lot of stuff, and he's really cool, really really down to earth person. I'm glad I met him. I, uh, I I'm I'm doing really well now, very very well. Like I can't believe it. Yeah, anytime I need money, my buddy Jesse's right there for me. I uh, he, he I've never had such a friend like him. It's a God's gift. So that just goes to show you that uh, God is looking out for me, I guess, eh? You yeah. know? And now, it's like I've got a family and uh, t I get to babysit Sunshine. And she's such an adorable dog. Like, she, she lays with me, you know, whenever I want to lie down. And we go for walks together, you know? Like, she high-fives me. She lets me paint her toenails, dress her up, you know? Like, she's just a great spoiled dog. I give her treats all the time. It's great. Somebody